Okay, welcome to the third in our series of update videos looking at the economics of externalities as a cause of market failure. Now, here comes the analysis bit. We're going to work our way through step by step analysis diagrams, in this case, for negative externalities. Really important. Hopefully, we'll go through this nice and slowly, step by step, to show you how to build your great diagrams to get those top marks in assessment if a question on externalities comes up. We think it's really important you ace your diagrams. Ace your diagrams means, well, lots of things. First of all, <laughs> draw the axes, label the axes, label the curves, label any equilibrium points, and make your diagrams accurate, big, and clear. Quality of diagrams makes such a big difference to how your assessments are marked, and ultimately, of course, the grade you're going to get in your economics. Uh, we're going to be talking quite a bit about the idea of the marginal output. So why is the marginal output or the marginal level of production important? Well, when drawing diagrams or carrying out detailed analysis, economists work at the margin. They think about the effects of one more unit produced or one more unit consumed. So we are going to talk about what's called marginal external cost, marginal external benefit, etc. So just, just the marginal just means the next unit. Here's a good example. So we're going to focus on negative externalities. So let's consider the example of a, maybe a manufacturing plant, a cement factory, let's say, uh, and they're dispersing some dust particles into the air. So they're emitting, and also as, as, as well as that, emitting some carbon emissions into the atmosphere. So there's two examples of negative externalities from production. Now, the marginal private cost is essentially the supply curve for this manufacturing plant. And the marginal benefit curve is essentially the, the revenue they get from selling the extra units. The private optimum level of output for a manufacturing plant uh, is where the marginal private benefit equals the marginal private cost. We're going to assume here that the cement factory only thinks about its own costs and benefits. Uh, what are the supply curves? What are the actual supply costs? And what are the, the revenue curves, the revenues from producing extra units? So the, 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 the private optimum is where is P1, Q1 where marginal private cost and marginal private benefit intersect. Now, how do we show the effect of negative externalities from the producer, from producing the cement? We've talked about dust particles, we've talked about CO2 emissions, some negative externalities. Well, they create external costs to bystanders, to third parties. So that leads to marginal social cost, the social cost of the next units being above the marginal private cost. And they're going to assume here that those costs get bigger, that the external costs get larger at higher levels of output. And let's be clear here, air pollution is a major issue. If you look on the little left-hand side tablet there, air pollution is estimated to have contributed to the deaths of more than 4,000 Londoners in 2019, according to researchers from Imperial College London. So marginal cost lies above private cost. And you know, there's lots of evidence coming out these days that um, air pollution is killing people in, in, in London and in other major cities. Uh, people travelling on subway systems apparently are, in, are being exposed to unsafe amounts of pollution. Uh, staggering levels of, of pollution which has stunned researchers. So, negative externalities create a divergence between social and private cost. If there are negative externalities, then we must add the external costs to the firm's supply curve to find the marginal social cost curve, MSC. Now, the marginal external cost is the vertical distance between social and private cost for any given output level. Let's take output level Q1. The marginal external cost is simply that vertical distance between social and private cost. That's the externality. Okay? So what is the social optimum level of output when there are negative externalities? Well, we're ignoring here externalities from consumption. The social optimum is where we take the externalities into account, where MSC, marginal social cost, equals marginal private benefit. Now, the social optimum output does not ignore the externalities. We factor them in. So it's an output where marginal cost... Marginal cost cost equals marginal private benefit. Marginal private cost 
equals marginal uh, marginal social cost or equals marginal private benefit, which is output level Q2. Output level Q2. Now, external costs damage third parties, the dust particles, the air pollution. Uh, but the consumer producer don't necessarily have to pay, meaning that the market output Q1, the free market output is too high. And in the case of negative production externalities, therefore, the market price will be too low unless we adjust. So why do we say that negative externalities leads to market failure? Well, uh, because the market price is not reflecting, not reflecting the externalities. Output Q1 only considers the internal, the private costs and benefits. If we ignore the externality, output is too high for a social optimum. And this means that there is overproduction in the market and overproduction. The gap here between Q1 and Q2 is market failure. So what is the essential point about negative externalities and market failure? What's the absolutely essential point? It's this. The key problem is that often economic agents, producers, consumers, they do not take account of the costs, the external costs that their decisions impose on others. Therefore, the market, free market, fails to price negative externalities properly, leading to excessively high output from a social perspective. Now, how can we show the social welfare loss arising from production? So, the social welfare loss arises from overproduction. Q1 is higher than Q2. Given that society would wish to supply Q2, but the private optimum is output Q1. Uh, how do we show the social optimum? Well, we think about welfare. So, let's put in A, B and C there. We'd prefer to be at A, but we end up at point C. Beyond, in other words, the, the extra output is Q2, Q1. Beyond output Q2, marginal social cost is greater than any benefit, and that causes social welfare to fall. We're losing some social welfare. Therefore, the deadweight loss of social welfare arising from overproduction is shown by the triangle A, B, C. Overproduction underpricing the externality leads to a loss of social welfare. Externalities are all around us. They literally are. Externalities, negative externalities from production and consumption, noise pollution, drowns out ocean soundscapes, uh, no penalties issued, no useless English farm pollution laws. So pollution collecting a flooded picnic area, who bears the cost of that? Wood burners, triple harmful indoor air pollution study finds, increasing the evidence that, uh, that there's wood burners inside many homes, uh, create uh, health risks, for, particularly for children and elderly people. More here, wood burning at home, now the biggest cause of UK particle pollution. Stray dogs turn blue by chemical waste from a Russian factory. If there's no better example of externality than that, then I'd be surprised. Well, maybe you can find a better one. So what we've done is we've been through the analysis of how negative externalities can lead to market failure. What we'll do in the next video is just think about how interventions by government can be used perhaps to control those externalities and correct for the market failures.